Hello and welcome to Sweden. Now for any tank enthusiast, when you mention certain countries, you think of certain tanks. As an example, for Germany, I always think of the Tiger. For America, it has to be the most famous Sherman. For the USSR, the T-34. And of course, for Great Britain, the Matilda. However, when we think of Swedish tank design, there is only really one tank that springs to mind, and that's the Stridsvagen 103, more commonly referred to as the S-Tank. An incredibly unusual design and very contemporary. We're here now in Arsenal in the Swedish Tank Museum. Now, it was a while before the Swedes came up with the concept of a turretless tank. At first, the thinking was to have something completely different, more like the French AMX-50. However, in 1951, they began work on a completely new project to replace the aging Stridsvagen M42. This project was named Emil. One of the results of the Emil project was this, the Kranwagen or KRV. This turretless prototype, like many other vehicles, became a test bed for the S-Tank. This was achieved by adding a suspension and also mounting a gun to the front. Sven Berger, an engineer, used the design of the heavy tank as a basis for developing his combat vehicle. Instead of an oscillating turret, he suggested making the whole tank hull oscillating, and so the turret was removed. Thanks to this, the tank silhouette became much lower. The first designs of the future Stridswagen series were ready in October 1956, and a year later, the concept of the new tank was approved. The road to the S-Tank was filled with prototypes. This particular one is number 17 of the Stridswagen Zero series, which began in 1963. This tank, number 17, poor old thing, was actually subjected to a napalm attack just to see how it would cope. Initial production began in 1967 of the first batch, known as the 103 Alpha series. The Stridswagen 103B that appeared in 1972 became the main modification. Compared to earlier versions, the armor saw some improvement. A more powerful engine was installed, and the vehicle's combat weight increased a bit. In 1988, these tanks were upgraded to the Stridswagen 103C, which boasted numerous improvements, including new tracks and an enhanced engine. In this state, the tank served up to 2001. The appearance of the Stridsvaga 103 wasn't accidental. The Centurion that had been in service in the Swedish army, although a good tank, was not ideally suited to the local theatre of operations, due mainly to its sheer size and in particular its height. Now what we've got to remember, of course, is that Sweden was last at war 200 years ago and maintained a policy of neutrality. What it required was a tank really bespoke to this local theatre. The system developed by Sven Berger turned the tank into one big turret. The gun of the Stridsvaga 103 is fixed, and the design of the hydropneumatic suspension removed the need for gun laying devices. The horizontal aiming is done by traversing the tank to the required side, and another feature of the vehicle is that it can sit up and sit down due to its hydropneumatic suspension. This feature is yet another example of how this tank is well suited to Swedish terrain. The tank can hide behind the natural cover of the ground and stone walls. Now the crew configuration and arrangement of the S-Tank is really unusual and certainly unlike anything that I ever served on. However, to give us a much better insight into it, I'd like to introduce you to a very special person, Stefan Carlsson. Now Stefan is not only the director of the Swedish Tank Museum, but is also a former Swedish tank company commander. Stefan, can you give us a bit more of an insight into this unusual arrangement? Well, it's very unusual because we have a three-man crew with a driver, a commander and a rear driver. And the driver is also the gunner for the tank, but the commander has also the possibility to drive and to fire the gun. Let's go and have a closer look. Yeah, let's do. As you can see, it's a very compact area, but it's quite comfortable and you have a vision out of the vision blocks that is better than any other tank I have ever seen. And you have the joystick to control the whole commander's copola over here and you have the sight in front of you. You control the whole tank with this sort of joystick and that's something that you won't find in any other tank in the world. You have the gear stick lever over here, brake pedal, accelerator and you control the machine gun on top of the tank over here. So even if it's not much space, it's a very comfortable tank and very easy to drive. 
The tank's exterior is pretty unusual. The unconventional technical design specification led to the very strange tank layout. The power plant is located at the front, the fighting compartment is at the centre, and the ammunition is stowed at the rear. What catches the eye is not only the absence of a turret, but also the wedge-shaped hull, and there's a good reason for it too. Although the Stridsweiger 103 loses to all post-war tanks of its class in armour thickness, the level of protection for its front is in fact very high. Its upper glacius plate, angled at 8 degrees, was a hard nut to crack for guns of the time. The Stridsvagen 103B has special welding on its hull that stops shells, so the armour protection became even better. Also, a special grid-like system was installed, which was mounted on the hull front and protected the vehicle from heat shells. Now, the Stridwagen 103 was not only the first mass-produced turretless tank, it was also the first to employ a gas turbine. Stefan, what can you tell us about this power pack? Well, on this side we have the diesel engine Detroit V6, 290 horsepower, which is not very much. On that side we have the gas turbine, the Caterpillar, with 490 horsepower, and together it's 780 horsepower, which is quite powerful for this tank. And like you said, because obviously it's quite a small tank in relative terms as well, doesn't weigh particularly much, that gives it a good top speed. Yeah, uh, 48 kilometers an hour. Which back in the day was a good yeah, top speed. Yeah, and it's forward and reverse. And of course, this ability to reverse a bespoke tank made for the local theatre of operations here in Sweden, so it was important it could go backwards as fast as it could go forward. Yeah, correct. Initially, the British L7 105mm gun was considered the main gun. But during the prototype tiles, it was replaced with the more powerful Bofors L74. Since the gun was mounted in the hull, the barrel overhang was very small. The tank inherited the autoloader from the KRV. The ammunition was stowed in three magazines, and there were 50 shells in total. Due to the automatic loading mechanism, the rate of fire reached an incredible 15 rounds per minute. And after firing, the shell casing is ejected out of a special hatch at the rear. The whole thing looks quite spectacular. There's one other feature that you can't leave out. The tank had an underwater driving system that allowed it to swim over water obstacles. It took 15 to 20 minutes for the crew to install a structure similar to the one used for the Sherman DD. The Stridsvagen 103 just shows what can be achieved if you set out to design a tank for a specific area of operations. It was in service for over 30 years in the Swedish Army. You either love it or you hate it, but one thing you can never doubt about it, it is unique.